16th chapters, that is the farewell discourse of Jesus, the words he told the disciples before he died. Um, and we have those words where he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we'll see what that means for us today. We prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the life beyond all death, the joy beyond all sorrow, our everlasting home. Rejoicing in Christ's victory over sin and death, let us come before God who calls us to repentance. God of life, by the resurrection of your Son, you make everything new. Newness scares us, and we confess to shutting our doors in fear. We have not listened to you. We have resisted the Holy Spirit, moving us in new directions. Our hearts are slow to believe your promises. Forgive us, O God, and renew us to embrace the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, Christ is alive and death has lost its power. Through the waters of baptism, you have been born anew by the living word of God. Know that your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name and that the spirit of the risen Christ is alive in both you now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
the grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the reconciling love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The first reading is from the book of Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him and they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is uh, graduation time, and we always have a graduation litany this time of year, a prayer for our graduates. O God of all life, in their baptism you blessed our sons and daughters with your spirit, promised your aid, and called them into discipleship for this everlasting blessing. We pray now for those entering new lives after graduation, praising you for their gifts and asking you for your continued blessing, for what you have given and what you shall give. For those graduating into lives of full-time employment, lead them to work that honors you, benefits the world's need, and ennobles their own souls. God of daily labor. For those continuing their study, as their knowledge grows, increase also its wise and loving use that they too might serve you through their learning. God of all truth and understanding. For those who have yet to perceive where life may turn next, grant them patience with the struggle, hope for the future, and confidence that you will guide them well. God of hope. Protect our graduates from any enticement that may tempt and lead to harm. Keep them from the cynicism and despair that may follow disappointment and failure. Embrace mistakes with repentance and misfortunes with restoration. Always making clear your word of constant and abundant love. God of mercy. Help parents and others who share concern for the dangers and decisions that will be faced beyond their caring eyes. Reassure them where they have done their best and heal their regrets as they entrust their sons and daughters to your care. God of grace. We commend our graduating sisters and brothers to you, O God. By your unceasing spirit, may their baptismal light so shine before others that they may see their good works and glorify you in heaven and on earth. The second reading comes from the book of First Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you will grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone is that that the builders rejected and has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. 
Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, or to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, <clears throat> would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and, in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, in my name, you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the young people to come forward. Good morning. Anybody know a knock knock joke? Well, let's try this one. Knock, knock. Boo-hoo. Why are you crying? I realize these are terrible. <laughs> try this one. Knock, knock. Noah. Noah, good place to eat. <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> so why the knock-knock jokes? Here's why. Jesus told us to pray. In our gospel lesson, he told us to pray. And when we pray, ask. And if we ask, we will receive. But guess what? If we don't knock, if we don't ask, we don't receive, okay? Now, that doesn't mean every little silly thing we pray for, God's going to give us. You know what Martin Luther said? If you pray and God didn't give it to you, it probably was no good for you. He felt that it was going to hurt you. That's why God didn't give it to you. Okay? So God always answers, but sometimes his answers are no because it's just not good for us. Okay? 
So, God wants us to always be knock knocking through prayer. Okay? But let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that we can pray and ask for anything. You always hear and answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you may go back to your seats. If you know a good knock-knock joke, you can tell I need to update my file. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to look at two things in this text. The first is, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And the second is that statement he makes about prayer. Ask. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Let me get, begin with a story of a, that somebody told in one of our Bible studies this week about an old farmer, I believe an old bachelor farmer, who was getting on in years and couldn't stay in the far, on the farm any longer because of his age and health. So he thought, what I need is someone to take care of me. So what do you do when you have a need? He got down on his knees and prayed, Dear Lord, he explained the situation to God as though God didn't know it, but he explained it and said, please send somebody to take care of me. A few days later, he's in a restaurant, and after he's done with his meal, when he gets up, a woman comes up to him and says, say, my daughter needs a job. She needs to have a job where she can take care of someone so she can also take care of her kids at the same time, her three children. And the man said, hey, that's just what I need. I need someone to take care of me. Have your daughter come and see me 9 o'clock tomorrow. And he said, uh, by the way, I am very prejudiced, racially prejudiced. I have been since my youth. I just can't help it. That's the way I am. And the woman says, no problem. So the daughter comes, 9 o'clock in the morning, has her interview. He said, you'd be perfect for the job. It's, the problem is your three children. She goes, oh? And he said, yes, I am terribly prejudiced. I'm racially prejudiced. And your three children are black. And she said, oh, my. So, prayer got him into that jam, so he decided to pray. And he told God the problem, and he said, Dear Lord, I've been prejudiced ever since I can remember. What should I do? And he said he heard a voice, clear as a bell, say, Get over it. <laughs> and now he adores the children. Now, Jesus said, Ask, and you will receive. Martin Luther put it this way. We should pray by fixing our mind upon some pressing need, desiring it with all earnestness, and then exercise faith and confidence toward God in the matter, never doubting that we have been heard. St. Bernard said, Dear brothers, you should never doubt your prayer, thinking that it might have been in vain. For I tell you, truly, 
that before you have uttered the words, the prayer is already recorded in heaven. Therefore, you should confidently expect from God one of two things, either that your prayer will be granted or that if it is not granted, the granting of it would not be good for you. Pray in confidence. That's what Jesus is su suggesting we do. Pray in confidence in his name. We are to be people of prayer. We also received an email, prayer request. And it was uh, rather cryptic, but the person um, listed all these things first, all the promises that God made. And in a sense, the email was sort of in a prayer. And the writer first was saying to God, you promised these things to me. Seek and you shall find. Pray continuously and it will be given. Trust, believe, and receive. God will never put more on you than you can handle. God is faithful. God is good all the time. All things come from God above. God wants to prosper you. You have a hard time finding that one in Scripture, but nonetheless... God wants to turn your situation around. Ask amongst another believer, and it will be done. Ask anything, and I mean anything, in Jesus' name, and it will be done. Nothing is impossible for God. God can't lie. His theology, you can tell from the outset, is a prosperity theology. Too often... His prayers are all centered and revolve around him. And then the question, what have you done, king, meaning God, that you have promised? And then he talks about the problems in his life that uh, he wants to be healed and he hasn't been healed and if you're uh, holy and righteous, you wouldn't force someone to live, meaning him, with someone he doesn't like. Evidently, he, he must be having family problems, maybe a divorce. Or work somewhere where I don't want to. A whole different attitude in prayer. One, dear God, give me everything. And rather than thanksgiving for having a job. Oh, I've had to work this same job all these years, over a decade. Martin Luther had something to say about that too. No one can believe how powerful prayer is, that it can affect... This is what I, the quote I wanted. From this it follows that the one who prays correctly never doubts that the prayer will be answered, even if the very thing for which one prays is not given. For we are to lay our need before God in prayer, but not prescribe to God a measure manner, time, or place. We must leave that to God. For he may wish to give to us in another, perhaps better way than we think is best. Frequently, we do not know what to pray, as St. Paul says in Romans 8, and we know that God, God's ways are above all that we can ever understand, as he says in Ephesians 3. Therefore, we should have no doubt that our prayer is acceptable and heard. And we must leave to God the measure, manner, time, and place. For God will surely do what is right. Prayer and faith. Prayer in Jesus' name. Not telling God, oh, this is the way I want it done. So prayer is to be stating in our hearts what we want and be open and honest. 
I think the secret is to understand what Jesus says. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What was Jesus' way? He told the disciples this from the get-go, and they didn't understand it. He told it to the disciples, and Peter said, Oh, heaven forbid, you can't be on the way to Jerusalem, to the cross. And Jesus tells us his way is the way of the cross. Sacrifice, giving, living, and most importantly, trust in God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Um, Frederick Buechner puts it this way. Some think of a Christian as one who necessarily believes certain things, that G Jesus is the Son of God, or Mary was a virgin, or that the Pope is infallible, or that all other religions are wrong. Some think of a Christian as one who necessarily does certain things, such as going to church, getting baptized, giving up liquor and tobacco, reading the Bible, doing a good deed a day. Some think of a Christian as just being a nice person. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. He didn't say that any particular ethic, doctrine, or religion was the way, the truth, and the life. He said that he was. He didn't say that it was by believing or doing anything in particular that you could come to the Father. He said it was only by him, by living, participating in, being caught up by the way of life that he embodied. That was his way. <clears throat> Thus it is possible to be on Christ's way and with his mark upon you without ever having heard of Christ. And for that reason, to be on your way to God, though maybe you don't even believe in God. A Christian is one who is on the way, though not necessarily very far along it, and who has at least some dim and half-baked idea of whom to thank. We're on the way. A life of love, sacrifice, truth, but especially trust. Trust in God. The way. We are to immerse ourselves in the way. And it changes us, transforms us. Neurologist Oliver Sacks tells a story that, that uh, sort of is an example, a metaphor for what happens. As a neurologist, he studied in particular people who um, had Tourette's syndrome. And they had tics and jerky motions. And uh, one man in particular he talked about had had a tick, and he would bow almost down to the floor all the time. And he'd make uh, noises that were irritating to people around him. A brilliant man. He became a doctor. He became a surgeon. And Oliver Sacks says he'd go through his life, his routine, even seeing patients with his jerks and tremors and adjusting his glasses and his bowing to the ground. But as soon as he got into the operating room and they put a scalpel in his hand, he was as steady as could be. And he was a brilliant surgeon, a heart surgeon. But as soon as he took his mask and gown off, he was back. Tourette's syndrome would take over again. But, but while he was operating, he was so immersed in that that it transformed him. Well, Oliver Sacks, being a neurologist, never made a spiritual application, but we can. When Jesus says, I am the way, his followers, you and I, are to be so immersed 
in his way, which is so much different than what the world says. To be so immersed in his way, love, truth, sacrifice, giving, that it transforms us, changes us. Our prayers, we soon learn. Our prayers in his way. Prayers that change. Prayers that don't merely ask for what we think we want and need, but prayers that change, change us. Now that old bachelor farmer, do you think he would have ever said, Dear God, cure me of my racism. But instead, he prays, Dear God, give me someone to take care of me. And God cures him of his racism. That's God's way. That's how God answers prayer. So pray, believe, and God, we pray, will transform you as you journey on your way in Jesus. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Made alive in Christ and filled with his Spirit, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all of God's creation. 
God of salvation, you have made us your living stones through the waters of baptism. We pray for the church and its leaders, for the newly baptized, for missionaries around the world. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, our cornerstone, you have called us to be your faithful witnesses in all the lands. You have entrusted us with revealing your will to the nations. Raise us up as your faithful people, not causing anyone to stumble, giving our time and talents for the upbuilding of your church, so that all people will be drawn to you, their true life and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God our way, guide our way. You call us to paths of justice. We pray for nations and leaders. Give us words of hope and comfort for the families of the miners affected by the fire in Turkey. Give us words of reconciliation and mourning as the 9-11 memorial opens in New York City. Give us words of peace and understanding as tensions rise between China and Vietnam over oil drilling. Give us words of anger, but not of sin, as hundreds of girls from Nigeria are still held captive by the Boko Haram. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, you do not want our hearts to be troubled, yet we long for peace and healing for ourselves, our friends, and loved ones who suffer, as well as for all people in pain. Bring your healing touch upon Doris Embertson, Robert Gipner, Richard Green, Mike Eisenberg, Bernice Kinsinger, Dorothy Lokensgaard, Angie Myers, Wayne Myers. God, our life, you prepare a place for us. We give thanks for the witness of your saints as we ask you to comfort those who mourn especially Frank Sterling and Margaret Penalto. Lord, in your mercy. God who finds a home with us, you draw all people to yourself. We pray for all who come to this building seeking a place with you. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers, merciful God, and dwell in us richly through Jesus Christ, our life, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, O God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death and gave life to all creation. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you. God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes in your name, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Loving God, by your Spirit we are born anew, and you nourish us like newborns with this holy food by which we grow into salvation. Give us grace to live as your risen daughters and sons, shining in the world with your marvelous light, until you gather all creation to the heavenly table where Christ reigns in glory forever. I'm going to encourage you to read your bulletin. One big announcement. Any class that I normally teach during the week will not happen because I'm out of town. And if you notice, I'll be at the Festival of Homiletics in Minneapolis. And Mick is coming along so that she can spend a week with her mother. Let's see which one lasts the week. <laughs> if you remember, she was, uh, her, her mother broke her hip and, uh, this fall, and ever since then, uh, she's fallen a couple of times, so Mick is going to spend some time with her. I think that's all I need to say. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, and offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks.